Hey, what's up guys? I'm back for my APR version 3.1 review. Um, I had some difficulty with my 3-bar map sensor. I got a bad one. That doesn't happen often, apparently. Um, so I just switched in the new one, and I'm off. Codes are cleared. Everything runs great. Um, so what am I going to be doing? I've got a little bit of in-town driving, and then I'm going to get on the highway, uh, give it some gas, and let you guys know what I think. Alright, so first things first, fuck this camera. It's a pain in the ass to deal with. Um, secondly, uh, I really love the throttle response in town. Um, torque response is a lot more immediate. Um, it kind of gives you what you want to get um, pretty quickly. So, one of the things I first, one of the very first things I noticed when I started up the car, um, and this could be a placebo effect because I was in limp mode for a couple days there, um, but. I get, you know, I, I go from negative 22 inches mercury in vacuum to zero or to even one PSI immediately. And I feel like that didn't happen quite as quickly as before, um, you know, the 2.02. 2. Um, so I really like that. Um, I get more engine braking on the 3.1, which is, which is kind of nice. So I don't know what that was about. Uh, it could just be this, the way I've got the engine configured, um, S3 intercooler, VF engineering intake with the MAF sensor relocate. Could be any number of things that didn't work quite as well in the version 2.02, and now we're working okay on the version 3.1. Um, but I do get more immediate and more engine braking, which is really nice around town. Um, so I remember back there's like a 300 page thread about the APR's 3.0 and 3.1 tune and I remember people talking when they got the 3.0 or the 3.1 uh, tune about how slow it feels around town and that's bullshit um, it doesn't feel slow around town at all um, in reasonable speeds you know I'm not going around full throttle from stop sign to stop sign um, I like to keep the RPMs under 2000 RPM um so, yeah, it feels fine. I mean, I'm like 1,500 RPM going up a hill, and it's got plenty of torque. I don't know. There's certainly no lack of power there, lack of torque. It's also, God, it's just so nice being off the off limp mode. <laughs> what a pain in the ass that was. Um, so, yeah, clutch engagement is pretty easy. Um, I commented on my version 2.0 review how much more difficult the clutch engagement was. And for the most part, it kind of stayed that way. Um, I don't know, the throttle response or the engine load response wasn't wonderful um, with the 2.0 tune. And that seems to be much better with 3.1. It tries a little harder to keep, keep everything tight and, uh, I don't know, energized, that's a good way to put it. Really, I'm just trying to pull adjectives out of my ass, but, so I got one more stoplight to go, and then a bit of road before I get onto the highway. Nice, looks like I'll roll right through it. It is, uh... 7.15, there are still some commuters on the road, so we'll see how traffic is going to be, but hopefully I can just get right into it right away. Alright, hopping onto the highway here. Full throttle at 2.5. Um, stage 2 levels of power. <laughs> And then it really opens up on the top end. Wow. The top end is so much stronger than 2.0 was. <laughs> Fuck me. I'm not going to say how fast that was, but it involves three numbers and not two. <laughs> wow. Okay. That was good. So yeah, 3.1 really opens up the top end. Now I know what people are talking about. Um, and yeah, okay, it's a little slower. 
uh, from two and a half to three, but you know, the spool rate is there, so it doesn't feel like, it doesn't feel like I'm not getting torque when I ask for it. Um, it just, it's not as grunty um, as, as it was before. And I said that about KO3 too. Um, it's not really the right adjective here, but let's do another little pull. Actually, I'm gonna do a pull from six. So I'm at 2600 RPM, 65 miles an hour. Yeah, it's not quite as energetic here. Let's see what happens when I hit about 4,000 RPM. <laughs> okay, so it takes about as much time to get from 90 to 100 as it does to get from 100 to 110. Because <laughs> right about that time, you're like, you're rolling up into 4,000 RPM, and then you hit 100, and the boost slowly feeds in, and then you're doing 110 before you know it. No, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so when I'm rolling into the throttle at highway speeds in sixth, um, it'll actually overboost a good deal. It'll overboost to like 17, 18 PSI, uh, which wasn't as much as uh, version 2.0 was. Um, but then it'll drop back down to what? 13 PSI pretty quickly. So that's probably the surge avoidance right there. Oh man. Pigs. Smell like ass. Smell like pigs. So yeah. Yeah, you can feel the sur surge avoidance. It's like it's gonna give you a bit more torque on on throttle, on wide open throttle, and then it just dials back just a little bit. But you know, it doesn't feel slow. Uh, it feels certainly a lot faster than, uh, you know, your everyday car would feel. There's an Eclipse, uh, latest generation up ahead of me. I'm not sure if he's being playful or just going 65 in the left-hand lane because he wants to see what I can do. So maybe we'll see about that. And there's traffic behind me. And Looks like a guy wants to <laughs> be an ass. So we'll see how that works out. Fucking weird traffic, man. <laughs> so I'm right on the coast of uh, Lake Michigan. I get all kinds of weird fucking traffic. You get people from Wisconsin who are incredibly polite on the highway. Generally, people from uh, Michigan are predictable, uh, but fucking people from Illinois, man. <laughs> I don't, you know, I understand it. Driving highways in the city is a lot different than driving highways out in rural areas like this, but man, there's still some pretty basic fucking rules. You don't go 65 miles an hour in the left-hand lane. Alright, so I'm gonna pull off the highway here and basically make a UE. And give it the beans again because that is fucking fun. It's a good thing you can't see my pants. I'm in my pajamas. I have no intentions to actually go anywhere on this trip. I am just testing out the car. Very, very happy that uh, HS Tuning supported me as well as they did. So I bought my three bar map sensor off of them. They have the lowest prices. I got it, what, I wanna say it was like $59 shipped um, compared to ECS, which is uh, $100 and eligible for free shipping, but not free. <clears throat> so anyways, call up ECS. Tell them I think I got a bad sensor. We walked through a couple diagnostics procedures, and uh, yeah, he's like, so I have no problem giving you a new sensor. I was like, great, just fucking ship it over, and he did. And uh, that was that call was yesterday at like 10:30, and uh, by lunchtime today, I had the part at my door. Um, just fantastic service. What can I say?
So 3,000 RPM, about 37 miles an hour. I got some trucks next to me, gonna give them beans, try to beat them. And I will. <laughs> So, you know, I'm, I'd love to know what the tune landscape is like for KO4. I'd love to have more experience with like a Unitronic GX, especially with their Extreme File. Um, because man, if, if KO4, if APR's 2.0 tune was competitive in the tune landscape, uh, 3.1 is another level. 3.1 is like a, a, I mean, it's like upcharge territory. I feel like I know everybody is so fucking sick up their ass about APR charging for things. Um, but seriously, if I got in a 2.0 car and a 3.1 car, and you told me the 3.1 was more expensive, I'd pay for it. I'd pay like $200 more for this tune uh, than I would for 2.0. It's wild. <laughs> and high RPMs, it just, it pulls like nothing else. Like 2.0, it was like, it was still, it still had like a torque roll off as you got higher and higher, like 6,000 to 7,000. You could still, you could feel the torque depreciating. The power was still in a plateau and you could tell, okay, I'm still accelerating the same rate I was before. But this just, it, it, uh, keeps giving you more, keeps squeezing a little bit more out of the engine as the RPMs climb. Uh, so totally worth screaming it out to 7,000 RPM, no question whatsoever. Not something I'm going to be doing all that often because I don't like bouncing off a red limiter. Uh, from what I've read in theoretical, science-y, engineering -y piston engine stuff, um, the most stress you can give an engine is trying to pull the piston down in the intake stroke, and that happens at high revs. Um, yeah, it's funny to look at the stress contribution from adding boost and to that, and adding boost is like nothing. So, all right, 4,500, 4,860 uh, miles an hour, 80, 90, 100, 10, 115, red line, 120, it just keeps going, man, oh my god, shit, 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 <laughs> so I really wonder these days if, uh, if trucks use ham radios, and if they're able to call in, uh, stations and whatnot. They used to do that, um, but ham radios are old hat, so maybe they don't. Maybe they use Waze instead. <sighs> but yeah, certainly fucking making some semis nervous by going way too fast on the highway. You have to remember this video ever goes popular, I'm going to have to re-upload it with some bleeps and all those speeds, because what I'm doing is perfectly legal. I swear. Alright, so, I'm going to engage the cruise control. Uh, one of the things I feel that I didn't feel 2.0 is a little bit of bucking with the cruise control engaged. Uh, with just trying to keep constant throttle. I'm not really sure what that is. It could be um, there's some trims going on, like some boost to fuel trims or some timing trims or something like that that are being adjusted, that need to be adjusted. Because, um, yeah, it doesn't... I mean, my speed isn't really changing, but you can feel the car kind of bucking a little bit um, with cruise control engaged. And, of course, the car should be keeping the same speed. Thank you. 
here isn't useless. Yeah, I completely forgot about um, torque management. I haven't really tested it. And now I'm, I'm off the highway, kind of getting back into town. I'm not going to try and uh, do a bunch of zero to 60s through the middle of the town. But right there, just coming off onto the highway and getting onto a B road. Um, yeah, torque management for the most part works. I mean, I was turning in second gear, so I didn't go full throttle there um, until I straightened out. And at that point, I was 5,000, 5,500 RPM. So I didn't have full torque anyways, but um, you could definitely feel there was dialed back just a little bit uh, because when I shoved into third, it was... I wonder if you could see that on video that I kind of <laughs> got pinned back in the seat just a little bit. Yeah. So you know what, I'm going to go back out into the country and uh, try and do some 0 to 60s and see if I can't feel the torque management working. It's been kind of difficult for me to find a country road that isn't populated because like I said, for some reason, 7.30 is the time everybody wants to commute it from home. Um, but these roads are a little bit bumpy. So, let me find this flat spot to do a 0-60. to 60. I'll let you guys know what that's like. A 3.1. Clear the area of any lawnmowers. Alright, this will have to do right here. So, zero miles an hour, total dig. I usually don't do this to my clutch, so. Oh, blew the tires right off at first. Holy shit! <laughs> okay, this road is way too fucking bumpy for that. Damn. All right, so what happened? Um, first of all, just environmental constraints. That road is bumpy as shit, um, and my tires are fairly bald and not very warm, so uh, I have traction problems in general. Also, I have stock mounts, so I don't get very good um, response from the engine wind-up. You can probably tell from the bounce of this fucking video that this road isn't all that straight. Uh, isn't all that flat. But, what happened? Um, so in first, I was actually wide open throttle up until about 5,000 RPM. And then I couldn't tell if it was because of a bump or because there was a massive torque spike or something. Um, the tires completely blew out from under me in first. Then I hit second and um, getting into second was fantastic. Then in third, things really started to take off and I was at 70 before I knew it. So I'm going to do that one more time. This is a much flatter road. And let's see what happens. 2,000 RPM drop. Wow, 60. 70. 80. 85. 90. It's just, I mean, most of my giggles are just having the car back after it's been in limp mode. The car sucks in limp mode. It is really hard to drive. Um, so yeah, torque management doesn't really do anything for me at first. Um, it actually gets decent traction up until about 4,000 RPM. But then you hit 4,000 and the boost spikes, and that's kind of like KO3 behavior. It's like, it's just so energetic that I lose traction immediately and then throttle modulation is a little difficult um, because of all that energy in the, in the turbo. Then I get into second and things work pretty darn well. I did get a little bit of spin in second, a couple hops here and there. Um, again, stock mounts, stock suspension, fully stock suspension. Uh, and then, uh, but it largely second just takes right off. And then the shift to the third. <laughs> You shift into third and it's like a whole new level. You know, I feel like, and I'm gonna bring out my nerdy side here, I feel like the Mark VI can be a little bit like Frieza. Um, stock, not really formidable, kind of a bitch. 
um, then you tune it and it's like, holy shit, this shit's powerful. I had no idea it was in this. Uh, <laughs> and it's surprising. And then you go stage two and then it's just like a little bit more. And uh, again, it's kind of surprising how much was left uh, by just removing that cat. And then you go KO4 and it's like, it's just in a whole different league uh, of, of performance. The whole character of the car has changed with KO4 for the better, a hundred times the better. Daily driving in, of course, in speed, um, in manners, uh, which way am I gonna go? I think there's a town that way, so let's try going this way. started doing that uh, later on in stage one. What an annoyance that is. I feel like, uh, I mean, if I'm racing a car, I don't shift really hard because I know the throttle's just going to cut out on me and I'm not going to be able to uh, accelerate as fast as I want to. But yeah, rolling on it's great because I don't burn the wheels off at first. Um, then I shift right into second and give it full beans. And that's where torque management shines because I still get a little bit of wheel spin. They didn't dial it back too much, which is nice. I still feel like I'm going as fast as I could go. And yeah. And then you hit third and then fucking... <laughs> you know, okay, so I was talking earlier about the manners of KO4. There's one uh, pretty significant rudeness of KO4. Um, it brings out the torque steer in the Mark VI platform. <laughs> so, think of that how you will. It could be a po positive, it could be a negative. Um, I think it's kind of a negative because I like it when my cars can handle the power uh, they put onto the road. And the Mark VI, uh, and the Mark VII for that matter, are so well judged in what they're capable of. Uh, cars want to turn right here. I want to turn left first, so I'm going to just get out in front. Thank you. Sorry, traffic, but a bastard. But I appreciate the thoroughness um, in some of his reviews, so I hope I can impart the same thoroughness in mine. cloudy out, but there's just enough of an opening to get those nice sun rays in the clouds. I like that. That's why I like going on drives. I like driving a lot. But anyways, I hope you guys found that useful. I'll however long, 30 minutes of it. And, uh, yeah, if I have anything more to say, I'll add a PS right at the end. Balls. I'm gonna add one PS to this video. Um, that is around town driving. Now, a lot of the driving that I do is 50 miles an hour roads, and then every mile there's a stop sign, and you repeat. And it was really kind of hard before 
drive the car smoothly in those kinds of situations. Um, especially with the KO3, it was so energetic and so, you know, snappy that it would give me a ton of torque when I didn't always want a ton of torque and it was a little more difficult to modulate the throttle for that. KO4 got a lot better because um, the turbine isn't quite as energetic and uh, when it did start over boosting it was really easy and really predictable to just dial it back a little bit and get a little smoother. So with 3.1 though what I've noticed is that it doesn't do that weird overboost thing. It'll just stick at an RP at a, at a load level, and uh, I don't have to modulate the throttle at all. It just does it all for me. Uh, so that's really great. I can't wait to see what I make of that um, in the coming days. And maybe I'll do another PS review for that. See ya.